In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the white From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt favorite uh, Timmy's mugs, having a nice warm cup of coffee, and having the privilege of welcoming you to our Bow Valley online service. We're glad you're here. Uh, this is the service on Sunday, May 31st, and it's a special day. 
Now, it's not a major milestone anniversary in the sense of being the 30th year or 35th year since Bow Valley started meeting, but it is on this day, May 31st, uh, 1990, that the government of Alberta recognized Bow Valley as a congregation. And so that's kind of special that that takes place on this day. But Bow Valley itself as a church has been meeting for well over 30 years. Well, we're glad you're here with us today, and I invite you to connect with us. We would love to hear from you. You can reach out to us when you go to our website at bowvalleybaptist.com, and then click on the drop down where it says, where it says contact us, and there's a place where you can reach out to us. You can share prayer requests with us. We would love to get to know you, and so we're glad you're watching uh, with us online. I just want to reach out to our congregation to say, way to go. Uh, so many of you have given so faithfully to support Bow Valley in this time. It's a key part of our worship and our love for God. And you've been so faithful to doing that. And so thank you. Thank you so much for, for doing that. And you can continue to have that as a part of your worship. There's several ways to give. We tell about that online as well. When you open our website, there's a banner across the top that tells you how to give and support our ministries here as we continue to reach the community. Well, again, we are thankful you've joined our online service, and today we have a special treat for you. Pastor Dwight Huffman is our special guest today. He pastored Bow Valley for about seven and a half years uh, prior to, to me becoming the pastor, and so we're so thrilled to welcome him today. We're glad you're here. And we pray that you are refreshed and that you truly enjoy the service. My name is Tina Friesen. I am a family member of the Bow Valley Baptist Church. I started attending here in 2012. And when my husband got sick, I was away for a couple, we were away for a couple of years, but I returned and have been here full time now since 2018. I love coming to Bow Valley Baptist Church. As I say, this is my family. And today I would like to share a little bit about what COVID-19 has done for me. I told my granddaughters the other day, you know, I'm really grateful that God allowed me to live through COVID-19. And one of them wanted to know why. You know, COVID-19 has done something for me I never would have dreamt. I spend most of my mornings listening to radio, Christian radio, I would add. And I usually have about three or four half hour segments that I listen to. And then in between, I take my Bible, I read, I have my devotions, I pray. And one of the things I always pray for is all the family of Bow Valley Baptist Church. To me, I'm not alone in this. You're not alone in this. We're together, and together we can make it. In fact, one of the verses that God has really placed on my heart is 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verses 3 and 4. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles. Why? so that we can comfort others who are in like trouble. And then I decided to figure out what is compassion and why are there two different words? Compassion is God feeling with us, suffering. He knows that we're going through COVID-19. He knows what we can and should be doing. He knows that we can reach out to others. But in order to reach out to others, we need to be able to feel like God does. And God has said, with compassion, I am comforting you. He's feeling along with us. We're not alone. None of us are alone. Yes, we may be cooped up in a house for a while, but that's why the half, out, half a day for me is so vital. I love sitting and reading my Bible. You know, God has just become so close to me, so personal. It just feels like he's my brother or my father sitting right there and I can talk with him. And it always, always amazes me at where my script, my scripture comes from when I'm thinking, now God, what can I do today? How should I use my next 12 or 
16 hours. And one of the things that always happens is the God of comfort that I have learned to recognize as my comforter in all of this is the one that I'm going to talk to. And by the way, compassion and comfort are not quite the same. I did not realize that the word comfort actually means sharing grief. And God shares our grief. God comforts us. He sympathizes with us. And for me, the most powerful thing that I could ever take out of COVID-19 is the fact that God is my all-encompassing friend, my Savior, my Father who cares. Hi everyone, David here. This morning I'll be reading a couple of verses of scripture, but before I do, I want to explain the setting behind me. Now this is a special Sunday for us in that our church is getting to regather for the first time at our drive-in service, uh, but also it's the 30th anniversary, as Pastor Gary mentioned, of uh, the government of Alberta recognizing our church. The house you see here was the place where 11 people met for the first time on January 9th, 1986. And those 11 people uh, met to study the Bible and worship, and they were the core and the seed of what is now become Bow Valley Baptist Church. And because they studied first from the book of Mark, I thought it was appropriate to have a reading from Mark chapter 4, verses 30 to 32. Jesus said, how can I describe the kingdom of God? What story should I use to illustrate it? It is like a mustard seed planted in the ground. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of all garden plants. It grows long branches and birds can make nests in its shade. So just like the mustard seed, which is a very small seed, but can grow up to be five to six feet uh, as a plant, I think it's a wonderful illustration to see how the church is that mustard seed, how those 11 people who met here were small in number, but were faithful. And I am grateful for what God has done through the lives of men and women at Bow Valley over the years. To God be the glory. Hi everyone, my name is McKenna and this is my brother Fisher. Um, please join us as we sing Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Welcome to Bow Valley Baptist Church. It is great to be back with you. And I am so grateful and honored to be a part of this service. I was watching television a couple of weeks ago and a judge was handing out a sentence to the defendant. Uh, it was toward the end of the program, so everybody was hanging on to his words. He got about four or five paragraphs into the sentencing process, and just about the time one of the parties was had a sigh of relief, he used the word, however. This little conjunction. This little word normally in grammar links to equal thoughts, ideas, or statements. But in real wor world, this conjunction hardly ever does that. In our lives, when someone gives us praise or they say something good about us and they get to a point and they say, but, or they say, however, we know that nothing they've just said matters, it's what they're about to say that matters. This is a great day of celebration for Bow Valley Baptist Church. We've been blessed. God has been unbelievably faithful at Bow Valley Baptist Church. Um, we've got many reasons to say thank you to the Father for all that he's done. He has blessed us with some great pastors, beginning with George Bojackley, Hamish Bunton, Mel Blackaby, and now Gary Smith. They, they have led with wisdom and grace and honor. Some of the other men, D.K. Hale, um, uh, Bob Shelton, have all, during interim times, led us. We've had great staff people here and great leaders. Behind me uh, and in this room is uh, a wonderful facility that God blessed this church with. We have a great deal to be thankful for, not the least of which is our partnership with the Canadian National Baptist Convention and the Canadian Seminary. It's through them the gospel has reached every part of this globe. So indeed, we have a lot to be grateful for. However, <laughs> um, it's easy for us many times in our lives to celebrate and give thanks, but that's not true for everyone. It's probably not true for some this morning. For some this morning, a better term would be inconvenient. It's the new synonym for COVID. Plans were changed. Um, directions have gone in a different way. Jobs have been lost. Things are different. Um, it's just an inconvenient time for us. And when it's inconvenient, it's hard for us to focus on how God's been faithful and all he's done for us. And so for some this morning, inconvenient is a better word. For others yet, it's not just not easy and it's not inconvenient, it's difficult. If you've ever gone through chemo, or you've ever been in the hospital for more than a night or two. It's lonely. Drugs take over our body. And we, you've been there. It's, it's much more difficult to remember the faithfulness of God. It's much more difficult to wake up and say, God, thank you for where we are. So for most of us, at one point in our life or another, it is easy to be thankful. That certainly is true for today. But it's not always easy. Sometimes it's inconvenient. And sometimes it's even difficult. About 600 years before 
the birth of our Savior. There was a conversation between Habakkuk and our Heavenly Father. And in chapter 1, Habakkuk is complaining to the Father about how he could let um, Israel get away with their disobedience. And God responds in chapter 1. In chapter 2, uh, David, I mean, uh, Habakkuk reinforces his commitment when he says, I will stand my watch and station myself upon a strategic place and I'll look to see what you have to say and how I'm to respond. He responds positively. But then when God tells him how he's going to bring judgment to the children of Israel, Habakkuk complains again and says, how can you do that with this group of people. And then we come to the end of this conversation between Habakkuk and God. In Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 16 through 18, Habakkuk writes, I heard and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones. My legs trembled. And then Habakkuk uses this word. He says, however, as bad as that is, I know what's coming. I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. He communicates he's not leaving. He's still going to stand his watch. Then he goes on to say a pretty f famous, a well-known verse. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, no cattle in the stalls. Habakkuk says, however, I will rejoice in the Lord and I will be joyful in the God of my Savior. I think it's important today that we begin to live out a life characterized by being forever and however grateful and thanks. It is important for us to live that out so that when others see us going through hardship and difficulties, they see us living a however life. I want to give you three actions that will help you with that process. Three actions equip you to be a however, follower of Christ. One, hang around those who live a life of praise and thanksgiving. That includes reading books uh, of people who have gone through extreme hardship and difficulty, and yet they lived out a life of praise. They, they may even use the statement, as difficult as this season has been, however, I will praise him. I will be a follower of his. You want to hang around people like that. You want to hang around uh, people at your church and in your small groups that demonstrate that even when things are inconvenient and difficult, they can still find the choice to praise and give thanks. A second action is to record the faithfulness of God. Journal. Put them in print somewhere. Save all the ways that God has been faithful to you and your family and your family's family. Share them at special events, around the dinner table, at meals. Take, take some time every month just to remember what God did this past month 
that's worth giving thanks for. My experience has been that when one of us is finding it difficult around the dinner table, someone else may not be finding it difficult. And we can allow them to help us go through and remind us of the faithfulness of God. That is so important. Of the many people you want to hang around as an action to be one of these however believers, do not leave out men like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Moses and the Apostle Paul and Peter and John and Luke, Barnabas. They all at one place or another, particularly after the resurrection, went through great difficulty and yet they still found a way to praise their heavenly father. And then lastly, wake up tomorrow morning. Take two minutes and say this prayer. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your tender mercy that's talked about in Lamentations two, uh, 3, 22 and 23. For if it not wasn't for the Lord's great mercy, we would all be consumed. But his mercy goes on forever and it's new every single morning for great is thy faithfulness. Start every morning just by simply saying, God, thank you for the many ways that you've blessed me and blessed our family and blessed those around us. Two minutes. That's the way to start tomorrow. Again, thank you for allowing me to be a part of this service. My prayer is that all of you are going to see this little conjunction a little differently than you did before today. Have a great week and begin it with, thank you, Father, for the many ways you've blessed us. Would you join me in prayer for a moment here? God, I want to thank you so much for the message that you have brought us today from Pastor Dwight. God, we thank you for his heart for people. God, we thank you for your heart for people. Father, I'm asking that the things that Dwight has challenged us to consider today, Lord, that you would use these things in our minds, our hearts, our thinking, our speaking, everything about who we are, and may, may it enable us to love more like Jesus and to live more like Jesus and change our world. God, thank you for that. Again, thank you for the things that Dwight has shared. And thank you for those who were able to, to tune in and listen to this service today. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I might like to invite you for just a moment, if you've taken a few notes or had some really great thoughts from what Dwight has shared today, you might just take a moment and just pause this video and just spend some time talking with God about what you've heard him say because he certainly wants to take these things from his word today and transform your life. So anyway, just take a moment uh, before I share my closing words and just pause this video and bring these things to God. Let him shape you with the things that you've heard today. Great. I, I hope that was very helpful for you. Just to have a few moments just to pause, meditate, and consider what God was speaking to you through this message. We do want to be a people that know how to celebrate and thank God for what he is doing. And so certainly we have a lot to be grateful for. As I mentioned at the first of the service, thank you Bow Valley Church for how you have continued to support our ministry, be patient with our ministry, uh, to share encouraging words, or write encouraging notes through this time. 
And it's been our, our pleasure to keep reaching out to you and share with you our online content, Facebook videos, these kind of things. And they're not just on Facebook, there are other places as well. We're trying to reach out in many ways as possible throughout the week. Uh, now we are having a chance to be able to begin to regather. And even this coming Sunday, we are going to host two small gatherings at Bow Valley for those that would be ready to come and worship uh, together. The gatherings will be about uh, 40 people or so that can sign up to come to two different services. And you'll be seeing the information online and through email and through our communications on how to sign up for these two uh, face in, in person services we'll have on Sunday, June 7th. So watch for more details about that. On Sunday, June 14th, the Cochrane Ministerial will be hosting a drive-in service. And again, you'll hear more information about that. Um, we will work to record that service. So it will actually be our service that will go online for that day. So the online services will be structured a little bit differently um, because of recording that service and then placing it online. And then in the coming Sundays after that, we're going to be working to meet the needs of our congregation as far as amount of services we have. We'll actually be watching for new information and releases from the government of Alberta. Um, really, our goal is that we want to see our congregation gathering again, and yet we also want to honor our government and the health authorities and what they're asking of us. And at the end of the day, we just want to be making wise decisions as far as regathering. And so thanks for your patience with us in that because we're really going to try to follow the guidelines given to us and yet really try to begin gathering again. But we want to take care of the health and, and steward the health of our people as well and also take the responsibility of, of being a strong congregation reaching out in this community. Well, love you, Bow Valley family, and we look forward to seeing you again online next week. And we look forward to seeing you if you were able to come and be a part of one of our uh, regathering services in the near future. God bless you. Have a great Sunday.